This steering dampener lockdown modification fits a lot of Subarus, and instead of listing them here, I'll link to a list in the description so you can find if your car is going to be able to use this or not. Many Subaru models use the same steering dampener, so this fits a lot of those models. While this kit does include a 5mm hex key that can be used to install the bolts included in this kit, I really, really recommend using a socket hex key instead. The kit also includes some thread locker, but I ended up using my preferred gel thread locker instead. If I didn't have that, I would definitely just use what was included in the kit. Along with that 5mm hex socket, I also recommend using two long extensions for that socket and a socket wrench. You will also need a socket to take off two bolts on the steering shaft. Mine was 12mm, but you may encounter a different size on your car. I also ended up using some silicone spray to keep it from binding up during installation. So let's get into the installation now. Put that handbrake on, break loose the lug nuts, lift the car up, take the lug nuts and the wheel off, pop the hood, and then look for your steering dampener. If you're not sure that you found your steering dampener, have someone constantly turn the steering wheel back and forth while you look for that steering shaft. There are two bolts that clamp the steering dampener shaft onto the rest of the steering system. One closer to the steering wheel, and one closer to your rack and pinion. You're going to need to loosen both of these up so that the steering dampener you're about to install will be able to fit in the dampener area. The included instructions recommend rotating it off two rotations, but that doesn't mean that once you're done with this you can rotate it back two rotations. You're going to have to tighten it back down to torque spec. Turn the steering wheel so you can position these in a way that you can easily access them. The bolt on the steering wheel side is going to be near the brake master cylinder, and the bolt on the other side is going to be more easily accessed through the wheel well. I also found that after I do the top bolt, if I rotate the wheel 180 degrees either way, it aims the second bolt in a direction that's easy to get to. Once both of those bolts are loosened, you're going to want to rotate your steering wheel so the steering dampener is going to face in this orientation. At first I thought I could do this with the clamps facing up and down, but I dropped those clamp pieces so often doing that. If you notice any silver nicks or scratches on this part, it's because of that, not because of anything to do with shipping. Before you even try to attach this part at all, it's going to be good to spray it with some lubricant. I had this part bind up on me multiple times because it didn't have enough lubricant in there. We're going to start with the longer included bolt in order to get these two halves to come together. Once that first bolt is tightened down, you should be able to see that it's in line with the dampener itself. It won't look bent like this, and you'll be able to take the bolt out without it coming apart. With the longer bolt out, put some thread locker on your shorter bolt and install that the same way that you put in your longer bolt. Once you torque that to spec, make sure everything's working properly and give it a good rotation. Next, torque down those two shaft clamp bolts that you loosened early on. Give the steering wheel another turn, make sure everything's working properly. This is the linkage that lets you steer the car at all, so make sure that it is definitely working properly. Before you put the wheel back on, now's a good time to check out your brakes and make sure they're in good working order. Make sure you don't leave any tools in there either. Put the wheel on, put the lug nuts on hand tight, and safely lower the car off of the jack stand. Torque the lug nuts to the spec on your vehicle, then make sure you have all the tools out from under the hood of your vehicle. Before you take it on that first test drive, now that the vehicle is on the ground, give the steering one last check to make sure everything's working properly. Everything seems good here, so I'm going to take it for a test drive. Don't feel anything new yet. So all the little irregularities in the road, I can feel those just the tiniest bit more. It's not much, but I imagine if you live where the roads are absolutely terrible, then you will really feel the difference there. I'm going to go over some speed bumps and see if that affects anything. I'll try to put one wheel on the speed bump and one wheel off. Alright, here's one of those speed bumps. Nothing. There's another. Yeah, there's nothing. And that's not necessarily bad. You don't necessarily want to feel every single jolt in the steering. The uh, damper is there for a reason. Now, if you're working on a race car you might want to remove the damper entirely so you can feel every little bit of the road and this is not a race car and if you're driving it on streets even if even though you might think that it's a race car you, this damper makes it a little more close to a race car but it keeps it drivable you don't want like direct race car steering on the road actually i take that back if you want to put race car steering on like a car that you drive once a week or once a month that's 
perfectly fine. You get that interesting race car rough experience and that's fun. I just wouldn't do it on a daily driver. This is a daily driver and firming up the steering as much as this firms it up isn't that bad. There's still a damper in there so it's got a smooth steering feel but the uh, firmness being upped on this is actually going to give you a little bit more road feel. It makes the little tiny adjustments a little more precise because there's less lag in there. And that's what I like about this mod. The steering is a lot more responsive now. There's only so much more responsive you can get in a car like this. You'd have to have a real boat of a car that gets firmed up in order for the typical person to feel the uh, difference as dramatic. But as far as this car is concerned, the change in feel is definitely quite an improvement. At the time of me buying this part, it was around $70. Is it $70 worth of improvement? Not necessarily. This car has an electronic power steering system, but not all the cars that can take this mod have that electronic power steering system. So the feel that changes is going to be different based on the electronic power steering and more of an old school power steering system where the pump is driven off the belt. So if you have an older Subaru and the steering is feeling a little sloppy before purchasing this mod, I'd recommend just making sure the basics are working well, like your tie rod ends, any of the steering system components that keep the wheels pointed in a certain direction. Make sure there isn't any slop in those components first. That's the case for any car, really. If you do a modification like this and your steering components are a little sloppy, they are not going to be made up for by this modification. You'll almost see no change at all. If you know all of your steering components are in good working order and your steering isn't quite as precise as you want it to be, then that might be the time to get a mod like this. So what kind of car should you install this modification onto? If this is your daily driver and you don't do much with it, you don't do any like spirited driving, there's no reason to get this mod. The uh, stock steering on this Crosstrek at least, perfectly fine the way it is. If you like getting the most out of your car, and you've already got some other modifications on it, especially if it's steering related, suspension related, then you might start considering it. If you put well over $1,000 into your suspension to improve the handling, you wanna get the most out of that, the extra $70 is gonna help you get that. It may be a little steep for that little tiny part that it is, but I will give them credit though. The packaging design that they use to keep all the parts separate so they don't get scratched up, very nice. And the two different bolts so you can install them like starting bolt to clamp them together and then the finishing bolt so it doesn't stick out too much off the end then that's a good design too the allen key that they included it was a nice thought but definitely not something i recommend using so if you think this part is for you consider getting it via the link in the description below amazon pays us a little bit for every purchase made using that link i used some of that money from previous videos to purchase that part and this part I'm going to be installing this part in another video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Either way, I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video, and thanks for watching.